Okay, so we're into chapter 6 now, and uh, section 6.1. And uh, let's start off uh, with inner products. We've um, discussed this before, I believe, but we were talking about how to multiply a matrix uh, by a vector. But uh, let's hit that again here. Um, so the inner product is defined uh, on two vectors that have to be the same length. So let's suppose that u and v are vectors in Rn. The inner product, also called the dot product of u and v, is given um, by u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2 plus dot 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 un times vn. So we simply uh, match up the elements, corresponding elements, multiply, and then add them all up. The notation is uh, as indicated here, where there's a dot u dot v, and that's where the term dot product came from, just because you normally see it written like that. So, for an example, suppose uh, we have these two vectors, u and v, to compute their inner product. Um, we just match up elements again, so 1 times 4 plus 2 times 5 plus 3 times 6. And so we end up with 32. So the inner product of two vectors uh, yields a scalar value. Okay, here's some uh, properties of inner products. Um, the fourth one I, I think is uh, the most interesting because um, uh, it discusses the inner product of a vector with itself. And uh, if we examine that, you see that um, u dot u is just u1 squared plus u2 squared plus dot 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 uh, plus un squared. So um, the um, since we're adding up a bunch of squared terms, then it has to be non-negative. And notice that the only way that it can be zero and so it's always going to be greater than or equal to zero, but the only way it can equal zero um, is if each of these terms is zero. And since they're all positive or non-negative, um, they all have to be zero for the sum to be zero. Okay, so, um, so u dot u is always greater than or equal to zero, and it equals zero if and only if um, u, u is the zero vector. Um, okay, on to uh, the length of a vector. The length of a vector, um, also called the norm of a vector, um, if you go and take more math courses, you might encounter the idea of a norm uh, later on, and there are different types of norms. This is just one of them. Actually, it's called the two norm because we're squaring the entries and then taking the square root. Okay. But you see the, the notation, the double vertical bars, indicates length or norm. And it's just the square root of vector with itself. So um, we know what v dot v is, the sum of these squares. And so then we just take the square root of that. Um, in two dimensions, it's easy to see um, how this works. Um, so we have this vector, the blue one here. Let's say it's v1, v2 then um, we know that this distance here along the x-axis is v1, since that's the first component, and we know that the distance uh, vertically is v2, since that's the second component, and we have a right triangle here. And so by the Pythagorean theorem, we know that the length of the hypotenuse here, which is the length of v, is square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared. So this is clear um, in two dimensions, and actually this scales, as you see, it scales to n dimensions, you still use the same uh, formula. Uh, at times we're interested in finding the distance between two vectors, okay? And so we denote that in this form, dist u of v, and that's equal to the length of the vector u minus v. So let's see how that works. So here we have a vector u, and here's a vector v, and what we'd like to determine is the distance between u and v. So that's the length of this line segment here, the black line segment. Um, so let's examine what u minus v looks like. Well, that's u plus minus v. Okay, so here's minus v down here, u still here, 
And so if we do the parallelogram method to compute u plus negative v, um, we end up with this vector. So here's u minus v right here. And you can see from the picture that it's the same length as this distance between u and v. And so that's why we compute the distance between u and v as the length of u minus v. All right. Um, we say two vectors are orthogonal to each other if their inner product is zero. Um, orthogonal um, is... Uh, um, looks like uh, two vectors are orthogonal, means it looks like they're perpendicular. As you see here, um, here's a couple of vectors 2, 1, and 3, negative 6. If you take the inner product, you end up with 0. And if you look at those plotted, then you see a right uh, angle there, so they are um, uh, orthogonal. Um, we say a set is an orthogonal set if um, you can pull out any two vectors from the set and their inner product is zero. Okay, so if I have this set, v1, v2, v3, and I will want to um, see if it's an orthogonal set, then I need to compute the inner product of each pair of vectors. So start off v1 uh, with v2, and uh, so I get 1 times negative 3 plus 2 times 0 plus 1 times 3, and that's 0. Then I'll do inner product of v1 with v3, and uh, then v2 with v3, and you see that all of those are 0. So that means that um, the set itself is orthogonal because we took all possible pairs and did inner products, and each one of those was 0.